Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be talking about the Nintendo 64, and this is definitely one of my favorite consoles from the 90s, and I do have a lot of fond memories of uh, playing this when I was growing up. Uh, so nowadays, there are more ways than ever to improve the video and audio quality from your Nintendo 64 and make it easier to connect it up to modern displays. So in the past on this channel, I've talked about the N64 Digital, I've talked about Tim Worthington's N64 RGB, and today what we're going to be talking about is Borti's N64 Advanced Mod. So this is an RGB mod. It's kind of similar in a way to uh, Tim Worthington's uh, uh, N64 RGB mod. But my understanding is that it has uh, extra features that I don't think any of these other um, mods have, with maybe the exception of the N64 Digital. So I've been curious to try this out. Um, the uh, developer of this, his name is Borti, and he's located in Europe, and I think all of the distributors of uh, this product are located in Europe. So it's not as common to see here in the United States. Uh, but yeah, I finally have one here. I'm definitely excited to install this, and uh, yeah, let's get started and see how it looks. All right, so I've got the Nintendo 64 taken apart, and with this particular mod, it actually makes sense to remove every single screw. Uh, the reason why is because the N64 uh, RGB Advanced is going to end up sitting about here, and it's going to be bolted down to this opening right here. So it's actually kind of easier to work on that by taking the shield off uh, like so and, and mounting it directly to here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're also going to make some changes to the top shell, uh, the RF shielding right here. So uh, I'm going to take it apart and I'll show you that in a moment. All right, so here's the top RF shielding. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this little flap of metal and removing it. Uh, the reason why is because we need clearance for a flex cable to come up through here. And uh, it's better to move it, remove it entirely rather than bend it just because the more space you have, the better. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take the N64 Advance and mount it to the top of this RF shield right here. So you'll notice that I took a little piece of Kapton tape and I applied it to the shield, and then I also used a razor and I cut a little hole here. That's because this is going to be mounted using this opening and using uh, a screw and then a pretty large selection of washers and nuts and all of this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so, so the reason why I have this Kapton tape here is because there are a whole bunch of components down here, and um, I'm just afraid of them making contact with the ground plane here, because if they do, they're going to short stuff out, maybe destroy the N64 Advance. So just out of an abundance of caution, I have this tape here. On the back of it, though, you'll see towards the back of the mod board, there are these little springs here. These are so that you can connect the ground plane of the RF shield with the ground plane of the N64 Advance. So back here, this metal is exposed, and so this will make contact with these springs, and that should take care of that. So I'm just going to put it right like this. So now let's go ahead and assemble this thing. So <laughs> it's a little bit confusing, but basically what you've got here is a, um, a screw, and then from there we have this uh, non-metallic washer right here, and then that's followed by two washers over here. Oops. And I think this just gives it some height just to kind of keep it away from, from the ground plane. But like I said, I just want to do this just to be safe. All right, so now that I've got those three on here, we're going to flip this upside down. Pass this through like so. <clears throat> and now we've got our larger washer, which covers that opening up. We've got this little, <clears throat> I forgot what these are called. Uh, but it's basically so that it locks. And then we've got our nut right here. So I'm just going to hand tighten this <clears throat> to start, but I'm not going to get very far. This is pretty tough. Now from here, I'm just going to hold it with a pair of pliers on one end and then screw the rest in on the other end. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is set a couple of jumpers on both the N64 advanced board and also on one of these little flex cables that goes from the, from the multi-out to, to over here. So, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to close jumper four right over here. Okay. 
Okay, so by closing jumper four, you're actually disabling line doubling. The reason why this is done is because um, some displays can't really handle line doubling uh, over SCART. Not only that, if you're plugging this into a scaler like the RetroTINK 5X or to the OSSE um, or, or the RetroTINK Pro or, you know, any of the various scalers that are available on the market, those can handle line doubling for you. So this is going to output 480p and then, I'm sorry, 240p, and then your scaler is going to take care of everything from there. All right, so now we also have to close jumper number one over here. This is required because we're using flex cables. Okay. And then right over here, there's a jumper called 33, and we need to close this just so that the sink is 300 millivolt sink. All right, so that's it. Now let's move on to the flex cable over here. So for the flex cable, there's two jumpers as well. There's one right here and one over here. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna close jumper three right here. Okay, and now we have a jumper here for sync. And so if you set the jumper to the right over here, then C sync is gonna be going out on pin three. Otherwise, you're gonna be doing sync on composite with pin uh, seven over here. The, mo the normal thing to do is to have C sync. So I'm gonna close these two. There's still composite video as well. So if one is using like HD retrovision cables, you'd be totally fine. So setting it to this jumper means that the mod should be compatible with both SCART cables and your standard Super Nintendo HD retro cables. Um, all right, so this is all set. Now let's keep going. All right, so the first cable that we're gonna solder onto the board is this one right here. This is the multi-out flex cable, which is gonna get connected right over here. Before I do that though, there's some important things that you need to keep in mind. First, you need to know which pins you're using for sync. Um, so in this example that I'm doing today, I chose pin three. So this is pin three right here. Before you solder on this flex cable, you've got to make sure that pin three is actually isolated from everything else. So I can tell with this particular one that it's connected to absolutely nothing. This is a later version of the N64. Um, and this pin was never used for anything on that revision. However, there are some older revisions where it is actually connected up to stuff. And there's even some versions of the N64 where there's 12 volts plugged in here. So you've got to make sure that if there is something uh, connected to it that you either cut the trace or you desolder the surface mount component that is connected to it. The same is true if you pick uh, pin nine for sync, which is composite video. I believe it's this guy right over here. So composite video is definitely connected to something. I think it's probably these surface mount caps right here. So if you chose pin nine, you've definitely got to cut that pin off and you also lose composite video. So that's yet another reason why I picked pin three so that this console still has composite. It can use the HD retrovision cables which require composite for sync. And then of course, if the owner of this console wants to use SCART cables, then it's fine. It uses C-Sync on pin three and you're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get this soldered into position. Okay, so now we're up to the toughest part of the installation, and that is soldering this uh, RCP flex cable. So if you guys know anything about other types of installs, like the Ultra HDMI or the N64 Digital, it works in a similar kind of way. You have a flex cable, and it attaches directly to the RCP right here, and sends all of the relevant signals over to the, to the PCB. Um, so this is pretty tricky. Um, you need to have good hands, a lot of flux, and um, you can either use like a chisel tip or you can use a pointy kind of solder tip like the one I'm showing you here. And so with this one, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be starting at pin number eight. So if you see this little dot over here on the left, this corresponds to pin five. So three over from there is eight. 
So that would be right, right here. There we go. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some flux and get this soldered into position. One thing I do have to say about this, which I really like, is that there's some kind of like, I don't know, rigid material here on the back of the flex cable. And that definitely makes it a lot easier to work with this cable. It's not quite as floppy. You have a little bit more control. Um, but anyway, all right, let's get to the soldering. Okay, so we're actually almost done with the soldering on these flex cables. So what we've got to do now is we've actually got to solder three wires to the RCP flex. One of them is going to connect the this side of this cap to this pad here. That powers the board, or the flex at least, with 3.3 volts. So we're just going to make a short little connection over there. The second one we're going to do is the reset line. So that goes from this pad over here to the second leg of this chip right here, the PIF chip right there. And then the final one is the control line. So that goes from here to, uh, on this particular revision of the motherboard, it's going to go into this little via right over here. So depending on the revision that you have, the location is different. I'm going to send a link in the description for the install documents for this mod. So it has pictures of every type of Nintendo 64 and exactly where to solder for the controller. Okay, so let's get these three wires soldered into place. Okay, so now I'm going to start reassembling this thing, and you kind of have to do it in layers uh, just because of the way everything is set up. So first thing I got to do is I need to bend this cable upward like this, and you don't actually have to make a proper fold because if you do, you're going to actually break the ribbon cable itself. You just kind of have to crease it so that it, it goes where you need it to go, just like that. There we go. So now from here, I'm just going to go ahead and put all the parts together. Okay, so I've got everything reassembled, as you can see here, and um, I have to say that maybe that's the one really risky thing about doing this mod, is that if there's some kind of problem with the main board, um, you're going to have to take all of this apart to get down there and mess around and diagnose it, so that part is not going to be fun. But here's hoping everything is good. I definitely checked my work and made sure it was all looking good before I, you know, started this step. All right, so now we're basically at the end. The only thing we have left to do is to solder the two flex cables onto the N64 Advance. Uh, so this one is pretty straightforward. You can see it just comes over here and bends into place. This one has an additional bend over here, so you have to kind of curve it like this and bring it into position. So it's a little bit more work, but not unbearable. And then finally, um, if you take a look right over here, there's a little ground pad right here. So this should be connected to the, the RF shield as well. So you can just basically you know, run a wire going from one of these screws here to the ground pad. And that's just an additional measure just to shield everything even more. So let's go ahead and do these final steps.
Okay, so everything is fully assembled and this is the final result. And I do have to say these Japanese consoles um, that are the uh, kind of like the Fantastic that we got here in North America are really beautiful. I really like this two-tone thing that they that they have. Um, and so here's the back of the console and you know everything looks stock. What's nice now though is that you can get composite, S-Video, RGB, and with HD Retrovision cables you can also get component from this port. Um, what's also cool is that because it's transparent, you can kind of see the mod just, you know, hanging out over here. So definitely a nice look overall. All right, so let's plug this thing in and see what it does. All right, so let's power this thing on and see how it looks. All right. So we've got Mario's, Dr. Mario 64 in here for a test run, and it looks like for the first boot, you get the main menu for the N64 Advance, which is pretty cool. So let's have a look at some of these options here. Um, I know this video info here just shows you what the current uh, statistics are, like what's being used right now. Um, this VI configuration lets you change a whole bunch of things, including line multipliers. Um, you can toggle the de-blur from here. So right now it's off, and you'll see if I turn it on, um, you can see that, like, if you look at that little character there on the right, that it sharpens up, and then I'll... Uh, here, let me turn it off again, and then off, and then on, and you can really see um, clearly that it that it does something. I'm gonna go here into this sub menu here, and you can change things about the color space. Uh, you can adjust the gamma value. You can make it you know darker or brighter depending on what you need. Um, some of these menus and options I don't fully know because I haven't really dug into it, and I'm sure that there are other videos that describe the features of the N64 Advance, and that's really not the goal of this video. What I really wanted to do is just show you how to install it. Um, but since we're here, I'm just going to do a quick overview of the kinds of things you can do. There are um, in-game button combinations that you can press to reset the console and also um, to toggle the blur on and off. That's really cool. I like that. You can adjust filters manually or you can have an auto filter um, you know, used as well. So it's a pretty nice um, you know, kit overall. I would say it's a little bit more fully featured than the Tim Worthington RGB. Um, I, think the N64 Digital probably has more options than this, but uh, but overall, this is an absolutely fantastic choice for um, for RGB on your Nintendo 64. I mean, it looks phenomenal. This is using the OSSC. I'm sure the results are similar or maybe even better with the Retro Tank 5X. So yeah, if you're looking to get an outstanding analog image from your N64, I totally recommend this. Um, it's a really nice mod. All right, so that's it for this week's video. Um, if you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I've got videos out like this every Friday. And then, of course, if you have a console that you need modified, then you can reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.